I thought I'd share with you 10 of my more memorable touchpoint experiences in an effort to bring this concept to life. What I'll share with you over the next few minutes are 10 touch points. In total, there are 59 words in those touch points, less than six words per touch point. If you string all the words together, it's only 40 seconds of conversation, or four seconds per touch point. Yet those 10 touch points had a profound impact on my life, and I'd like to share them with you now. Touch point number one. I was a first year graduate student at the J.L. Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University, taking management policy class. My professor, Ram Sharan, noticed that my schoolwork was starting to slip. I was not only taking a full load of classes, but I was also working two jobs, and I was stretched pretty thin. One day, Ram called me aside and said, Doug, you can do better. Four words in less than five seconds that inspired me to hold myself to a higher standard. And you know what? I remember those four words as if they were spoken yesterday, and that was 35 years ago. Let's move on to touch point number two. Shortly after I graduated from Northwestern University in the J.L. Kellogg School of Management, I accepted a job with General Mills in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, I had been raised in and around Northwestern University. I'd really never lived anywhere else. And I accepted this job in Minneapolis, Minnesota, actually in Golden Valley, Minnesota, not knowing one person in the entire state. I can remember driving up there on a cold March day to start work. I had directions to go to the Ambassador Motel on Highway 12 in Golden Valley, Minnesota. I went up to the reception desk and I said, hello, my name's Doug Conan. And the woman behind the desk in a very motherly way had been prompted and knew I was coming. And she said, welcome to Minnesota. She did it in such a kind and genuine and caring way that I began to feel a little at home in a very foreign geography. Three words that changed my view on my life in Minnesota. A few weeks later, I was at General Mills, and like many people starting a new job in a new place, I was totally lost in the building. And this elderly man found, found me stumbling around, and he said, young man, you look lost. And I said, well, yes, sir, I am. And he said, how can I help you? I said, well, can you f help me find my way back to uh, the marketing department? He pointed me in the way. He said, so you work in marketing. He said, if there's one thing I want to leave you with, he said, I want you to give it all you've got. And ultimately, I then saw his picture about a week or two later, and I discovered he was the CEO and chairman of General Mills, who had pulled me aside and encouraged me to give it all I've got. And those five words have inspired me to lean into my work with greater intensity. I carry them with me today. Touch point number four. General Mills, my first performance review. I'd only been there six months. I'd never worked in an office environment in my life. I was struggling to hit the ground running with people who, many of whom, had worked in offices before. And here I was, uh, clearly a, a, a rookie. The, uh, my performance review was at the six-month mark, and my manager, uh, reviewed me with this observation. He said, Doug, you are clearly very determined to contribute here, but quite frankly, your work is very mediocre. And I was able to work through that comment, but as most of you know, when you have a performance review, you also have your boss's boss make a comment on the review form. And my boss's boss comment said, you should look for another job. This is the first performance review I'd ever had in my life, and my boss's boss, who I thought was a god, had just told me to go look for another job. He wasn't inclined to give me the time of day or the benefit of the doubt. I was devastated and very anxious. But you know what? I did play through it. And those six words reminded me that the corporate journey is not for the faint of heart. You have to bring great resolve to your work. It's not all a bed of roses. Touch point number five. General Mills again. 
I persevered through some difficult times as I was starting up my career, and ultimately I was promoted to product manager in a very timely way. Uh, at that point, shortly after that promotion, within 48 hours, I had a call from my wife's grandfather, Mr. R.T. Johnstone. And R.T. called me, a man I admired greatly, and he said, Doug, you know, I am so proud of you, don't you know? Those five words of encouragement ring in my ears today, and they reminded me that I was not alone on this journey, as difficult as it was. My family was, is, and will always be with me. Touch point number six, General Mills Toy Group. After six years of working in the food group, I transferred over to the toy group, and three years in, I lost my job. I've shared this experience in other venues before, but I had an acting vice president call me into his office and say, your job has been eliminated. You need to be out of the building by noon. My career with General Mills, nine years, was over in a snap. In those 15 words delivered in five seconds, I, was, I once again reaffirmed for me that the corporate journey is not for the faint of heart. I also learned that I needed to be better connected to the outside world and that I couldn't count anywhere on lifelong employment. Touch point number seven. After I was let go, I went to an outplacement counselor, a man by the name of Neil McKenna. Every time Neil would answer the phone, he would say, hello, this is Neil McKenna, how can I help? With those four words, Neil changed my work life. He helped me begin to see beyond my own agenda and to discover the fulfillment of starting every interaction with the desire to be helpful. A powerful, powerful lesson. Four words, two seconds. Touch point number eight. Touch points don't just have to happen in personal interactions. Some of my more interesting touch points have occurred when I'm reading. During the summer, I love to read Western novels, specifically written by Louis L'Amour. There must be a hundred of them, and I must have met, read them all two or three times, and I can never remember whether I've read it or not, and I always read it again, and by the end of the book, I've realized, yeah, I've read this book. But in one of these books, I read this great quote one summer. He never knew when he was licked, so he never was. Eleven words. They hit me in a moment when I was really ready to hear them. Eleven words that have consistently inspired me, yet again, to never give up. He never knew when he was licked, so he never was. Touch point number nine. July 2nd, 2009, I was involved in a very serious automobile accident. I was traveling home for the 4th of July weekend. I was in the back of a Lincoln Navigator asleep with my seatbelt on and we ran into the back of a stopped dump truck on the turnpike in New Jersey going 70 miles an hour. It was a very serious accident. I was taken to a nearby trauma center and went through an extensive array of surgical procedures. I was pretty much out of it for 24 hours. When I woke up in the ICU, my wife Lee was there. She was right by my side when I woke up. And all she said were two words. She said, I'm here. Two words that connected me in a powerfully indescribable way with her and with my recovery. I will never, never forget that moment. Two words, one second. Touch point number 10. I was recovering from the automobile accident I was in the ICU, I was in the trauma center, I then went to a hospital, and then I was in a rehabilitation program. I dealt with nurses across the board in all four of these different facilities. I was in this process for about 40 days. I had an experience time and again with nurses that reaffirmed for me the power of the touch point idea. What would happen if it went well, and what could happen if it didn't go well? Well, in this case, every nurse would come into my room and ask me the same question. We had the same protocol across all four facilities. They would ask me, how is your pain? And I would answer in, 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 on a scale of from one to 10, 10 being pain was unbearable, one being it was very manageable. 
And then together we would figure out what I needed to do in order to become comfortable. Every time they would come in and they would try and connect with me. How is your pain? When the nurses were fully prepared and were exceptionally gifted at managing patients, they would come in and dial in in a very genuine and thoughtful way and say, how is your pain? And as they did that, they could create a magical moment for me that would be most helpful. At the same time, we had some nurses who were new to the profession or new to the facility or new to working with me who felt a little uncomfortable getting into a conversation. They weren't fully prepared. They would say, how is your pain? And I would quickly realize the conversation was not about me. It was about how they were going to handle me. It was about them. And I discovered how awkward that conversation could be if they weren't prepared to deal with me in a constructive way. So those four words, how is your pain, opened up a world to me that was magical when the world was well managed, that was incredibly awkward when the world was not well managed. Those four words reaffirmed for me the power of touch points. There you have it, 10 memorable touch points, 10 touch points, 59 words, less than six words per touch point. Strung together, 40 seconds of conversation, roughly four seconds per touch point. Yet those 10 touch points have had a profound impact on my life. I encourage each of you to look for opportunities to have a profound impact on the next touch point you encounter with the people with whom you work and live. You have an opportunity to make a tremendous difference in their lives. Make the most of it. The next touch point is right around the corner. Use it wisely.